The Resistance Management School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CropLife Canada. So Dr. Sikama, can you paint a picture of herbicide resistance in eastern Canada? How widespread is the problem? So herbicide resistance is not new to Ontario farmers. It really started in 1973 with triazine resistant lambs quarters on a farm near Ripley, Ontario. And then group two resistant weeds were first documented in the province in uh, 1996. However, the real challenge for Ontario farmers in 2018 is glyphosate resistant, uh, glyphosate resistant weeds. And they include glyphosate resistant giant ragweed, which was uh, found from seed collected in 2008 glyphosate resistant Canada fleabane from seed collected in 2010, common ragweed from seed collected in 2011, and water hemp from seed collected in 2014. So glyphosate resistant Canada fleabane is the most widespread glyphosate resistant weed in the province. It stretches from Essex County in the southwest adjacent to the Michigan border all the way to Glengarry County adjacent to the Quebec border in the east. What makes the problem even more challenging for Ontario farmers is we now have multiple resistant Canada fleabane that's resistant to both the group two and the group nine herbicides. In terms of glyphosate resistant water hemp, it was found from seed collected in 2014. And just in 2018, we confirmed the first four way resistant uh, weed biotype in Canada and water hemp in some locations in Ontario is resistant to the group 2, 5, 9 and 14 herbicides. Now when you talk to growers and agronomists you tell them that herbicide resistance is manageable but it will have a significant impact on growers bottom line. That is uh, correct. So the presence of glyphosate resistant weeds will have an impact on profitability for the uh, grower and there's two reasons for that. One is the presence of glyphosate resistant weeds will compete with the crop and it will result in reduced crop yields. And as you can see here, we have glyphosate resistant Canada fleabane in soybean. And depending on the density of the fleabane and the relative time of weed and crop emergence, yield loss in soybean can approach 100% due to glyphosate resistant Canada fleabane interference. Having said that, and the good news for Ontario farmers, we do have weed management programs where you can get near perfect control of glyphosate resistant Canada fleabane with a program such as Roundup plus Aragon plus Sencor plus Merge. However, that's gonna cost them about $30 for their pre-plant burn down herbicide in contrast to what used to be $6. And so, that additional $24 is straight off of their bottom line on every acre that's infested with glyphosate resistant Canada fleabane. So Dr. Sikama, can Eastern Canadian farmers, farmers in Ontario eliminate this problem through management? So in terms of eliminating glyphosate resistant weeds through good weed management tactics, tactics is very much weed species specific. So with weeds that have a relatively short uh, viability in the soil, I think with perfect weed control over a five or 10 year period, you could eliminate some of these weeds from the field. In contrast to that, if you have a windblown seed such as glyphosate resistant Canada fleabane, uh, you could be the absolute best manager in Ontario and you could still have the problem and it's because you have windblown seeds from either neighboring farms, non-cropped areas, roadsides, windbreaks and so on. So I think Ontario farmers will be dealing with glyphosate resistant Canada fleabane indefinitely into the future. So that begs the obvious question. What can growers be doing on their farms? What are the best management practices they could and should be following? So I think the basis for managing glyphosate resistant weeds in Ontario is diversity. We need diversity in our crop production system. So that could be a corn, soybean, wheat rotation. We need to have diversity in the herbicide modes of action that we're using. 
So any time we apply a burn down herbicide, we should add a second effective mode of action to the tank, or even with your post-emergence herbicides, do not rely on glyphosate exclusively for weed control, but add another herbicide to the tank that will address the predominant weeds on your farm. And I think there's many other things that farmers can do. They could increase their seeding rate they could uh, re reduce their row width so that the crop is more competitive with the weeds and will contribute to your overall weed management program. In some situations, it may make perfect sense to use a cover crop, let's say after winter wheat combining, to keep the soil covered so that you don't get any emergence of uh, late germinating weeds in that field. Final question for you, Dr. Sikama. You know, what do you say to growers who don't yet have herbicide resistant weeds on their farm? If you do not have herbicide resistant weeds on your farm at this time, I think growers should implement an integrated weed management program where they have a diverse number of crops in the rotation. They rely on multiple different herbicide modes of action. They can reduce their crop row width. They can increase their seeding rate and incorporate cover crops into their crop production system. I think by implementing all of those things on the farm prior to the herbicide resistant weeds showing up on your farm, you're gonna reduce the possibility or probability of those weeds showing up on your farm.